I would say the, the way we think about that is we need to have a compelling business model regardless of incentives. So, you know, that's what we've worked really, really hard on refining, packaging, making repeatable, um, and understanding our, our market and understanding our audience and their, you know, the value they're looking for and their incentives. Uh, to be able to structure a model that ensures R ROI for them regardless of what happens with a 30C tax credit. So typically the way we're at this stage, the way we're able to present our products and our concepts to, um, you know, to a lot of our partners is, hey, full freight, full cost of product, full tax, hopefully you can get some kind of tax exemption um, we can still make a really compelling argument, and that's how we've actually sold every deal. But then we'll start to run down the capital stack and say, you know what? But you're also in a, a low moderate income area, so there's potential that you can get a 30C tax credit reduction. Um, you know, we also qualify for accelerated depreciation, so you know, there's another layer. So by the time we get done, the total cost of ownership could be pretty low, but we need to win on the, the business model of that full freight cost. Um, and so our thinking there is regardless of administration. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it changes our strategy. You know, this, this is about um, creating a more sustainable climate for all of us to live. So yes, it will be harder if a certain somebody wins versus another somebody. Um, but I, I don't think there, you can't deny this anymore. You know, it's, it's just out there. Um, and the amount of government sponsored programs around the world, if not the US, has just grown significantly. We, we were at Climate Tech uh, at the Google Lab yesterday and met a whole bunch of folks from Europe and Israel and other countries that are really working with their governments on the gap that you just addressed, early stage hardware and software startups, but also the idea of incubating and helping apply climate lens to everything that's being worked on. So everything from fintechs to financial services and marketplaces for options, but also like marketplaces for services and selling carbons um, to packaged devices to track data. So I, I don't really think it changes anything for us. Um, nope. I cannot add a little bit more. Um, so for my case, I think uh, the incentives current policy is kind of so unpredictable to be part of the global market, to study US market, EU market, Chinese market. We figure out we can count on government policy, we can predict those changes. So my little experience will be like, we try to explore different EU scenario applications. One of the use cases, we talked to a government agency about air uh, quality uh, in California. They said, using your technology, you see the value pack. You can help facilitate the transition to the EV space or the, um, the electrification of either commercial cars or passenger cars. That will help us to uh, move this forward so we can explore some kind of funding opportunities. Another way I do this is for collaboration opportunities with the national lab uh, top universities to see uh, anywhere we can collaborate. We focus on the overall value pack. Some of the technology uh, originated from university focus on the cells. Collaborate with them can help you for the funding opportunities. National Science Foundation, uh, Department of Energy, a uh, lot of opportunities in there. All right, I like that. Building a, building a business and being set up no matter who wins is, is a good strategy for sure. Um, all right, so sticking